Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to explain to you guys what will happen when the Windows 10 end of support is reached in October of 2025, and what will happen to incompatible devices that do not support Windows 11, or you choose not to go around any of the workarounds in order to get Windows 11 running on incompatible hardware, which can be complicated for a lot of novice computer users, as well as these devices aren't meant to run Windows 11 as well. So basically this will be very similar to what happened with earlier versions of Windows. So when Windows XP, Windows 7, and when Windows 8 reached their own end of life, the computer still works. You're still able to use your computer. However, there won't be any more Windows updates available. I've noticed that since Windows XP reached its end of life back in 2014, most major web browsers supported it for the next two to three years. Usually Chrome gives web browsers from its current track record about one to two years of additional or extended support once the end of life is reached. And Firefox usually goes for another six months to a year from how I recall and how it seems like they have a little bit of a more longer support cycle for older operating systems. Uh, most software will not be supported past one or two years after end of life is reached. There also will be incompatibilities with new hardware, so new graphics cards, new devices and games and so forth may no longer work on older versions of Windows once you get past, like I said, once about a year or two after end of support or end of life is reached for those respective operating systems. And obviously it depends on the user base. If there are a lot of people still using Windows 10, this may go on a little bit longer than it would otherwise. So for example, Windows Vista, when Windows 7 support ended, they basically axed Windows Vista, and I'm talking in regards to third-party vendors. So when you have a group like Windows 7, where I think they still make up about 20, 25% of the Windows market share, last I checked, you will have a larger group of developers that will continue to support the operating system. But if you only have 1% or 2% market share, it's probably going to be um, ending pretty soon. You're not going to have that sort of time commitment or expense that these publishers are going to be making games or software or drivers for old, unsupported operating systems that are never going to be coming back. So it's just an investment in their time that they're not going to put forth in supporting an old version of Windows. So there's really no incentives for staying on older versions of Windows, especially if you do online banking or other secure activities online. It puts you at a greater risk for having issues with hacking attempts and different viruses and malware that are online. So it's good to have your entire system secure, but really once the browser stops supporting it, not only will you have less security, but websites won't render properly anymore after a couple of years past the end of life for those particular browsers. And you're just going to have more and more problems compound over time. So it's really um, built in obsolescence. You know, if that is a pretty good way to characterize it in my view, you know, it is unfortunate. But it is, you know, how Microsoft makes money. They have to keep selling new versions of Windows. And the way they do it is they get you on new computers with faster hardware. And then they can have more resource-intensive applications. And they can offer more products when your hardware supports it. So they have an incentive to get people off of older hardware. I know with Windows 10, there were a lot of computers that probably were running Windows Vista and Windows 7. So those computers can easily be 15 years old by this point, and by the time 2025 comes around, they could be 15 to 20 years old. And at a certain point, Microsoft doesn't want to continue to support those older versions of Windows. They're basically holding back the newer versions of Windows with more resource-intensive applications and needs. At least that's what they would say. For most people using an internet browser and a word processor, I would personally disagree with that assessment. But generally, you know, everyone always looks forward and not backward. So that's where you come across the issue with unsupported hardware and software and so forth. So your computer is still going to work in 2025 and 2026 and it'll probably work for another 10 years after that. Now, will I be connected to the internet 10 years later? 
probably that's not uh, an advisable suggestion. I certainly wouldn't recommend doing that on a computer that you're doing banking or any sort of sensitive information online with. Uh, you're going to have issues with video playing, for example, on YouTube and so forth. YouTube probably will stop working on most browsers within five years or so after the end of life is reached. Again, it, web browsers seem, if you're kind of catching the trend here, web browsers seem to lag behind the end of life for the operating system by a couple of years. And then those browsers still work, but they're not getting any more updates. So then as the web becomes more and more resource intensive and the web standards change, unfortunately your old legacy web browser won't be able to keep up with the new internet experience of 2030 or 2035 even. So just want to put that out there. Other options, you can upgrade specific hardware requirements if you run the um, PC Help Check utility where you check Windows 11's hardware requirements. You can see if maybe it's reasonable that you're able to actually upgrade your system hardware. I know with the trusted platform module that they've rolled out or they've made a requirement, I should say, for Windows 11, that became more of a roadblock for a traditional update. And like I said, there are other ways to upgrade to Windows 11 that even Microsoft does publish on their site. I've seen it directly on Microsoft's website, but definitely it's more tech savvy. It's not really for beginners. And I've noticed that if you do an unsupported upgrade, it will not allow you to do a feature upgrade every year. You actually have to manually go in and kind of redo what you did in order to get around the TPM and secure boot requirements that you did the first time when you installed Windows 11. So they definitely don't make it easy. They don't want to encourage it. And if you're responsible for you know, an elderly parent or just some community that you have to be responsible for updating their computers and making sure everything's running smoothly, you know, I don't really think that running unsupported hardware is probably the best idea just in terms of your own sanity. And then we're not even talking about the requirement for Microsoft-based accounts for Windows 11, which again, there is a workaround for that as well. But I notice it's becoming more and more convoluted as time goes on in order to get around some of these requirements. And they're pretty loose requirements. They're rather arbitrary uh, from what I've seen. They don't really seem to have any sort of impact on the functionality of the computer. But you never know. And like I said, if you're responsible for other people's computers, I would not suggest upgrading unsupported hardware on customer or client computers. It's not worth it. If you want to do it on your own personal computer, you know, that's one thing. But if someone's paying you, I, I wouldn't um, suggest upgrading them on unsupported hardware. It's just something I wouldn't take the chance with. But anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, brief tutorial, guys. Just kind of wanted to give my thoughts a little bit on Windows 11 too. A little bit of a different type of video format today. Hope you guys liked it, and maybe we'll make more of them in the future. But for now, I will let you guys go. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.